I'm about to tell you about how I accomplished one of the biggest success stories of my life, how I 100% beat my sugar addiction after having this addiction for 50 years straight. It's awesome, I'll tell you exactly what I did, what worked and what didn't work. I regularly consult with fitness coaches and I was having a problem where I wasn't losing weight or wasn't maintaining body fat loss because I was eating too many calories on my cheat days. And the biggest reason for that was that I was eating a lot of food on my cheat days that was full of either sugar or flour. Lots of calories, not good. So I talked to my coaches about how to handle this and what's interesting is that the science is your taste buds, your biology, your physiology, your hormones resets once every two to three weeks in terms of the type of food that you crave and want. So that way, if you go cold turkey from a type of food that is a problem for at least two to three weeks, you shouldn't want that food anymore. The challenge is most people don't do that. What most people do is what I was doing, is they would say, okay, no sugar or no bad food all week, but I get a cheat day or I get a cheat meal once a week, so once a week I can have ice cream or whatever. The problem is that is well within two to three weeks. That's within six, seven days. So you never get the chance to get your body to shed that addiction because you're always renewing it by having those cheat days. The only way to actually do that is to go 100% cold turkey for two to three weeks and not have any of that food for two to three weeks, not even a bite. So that is exactly what I decided to do after a little research and some soul searching and I'll tell you exactly what I did. Before I do that, if you like this kind of content, on how to date multiple attractive women, have location independent income, and live the freest lifestyle available to the modern day man, you should subscribe to this channel, click the notification bell, put a like on this video, and leave a comment on this video, and that way you'll be sure to get this content for free in the future. So here's what I did. Step one, I made the decision to eat no sugar or anything from flour for three weeks, not two weeks, Three weeks, because if the science said two to three weeks, knowing my body, I said, all right, I'm not screwing around with this. We're gonna do three weeks. So three weeks, cold turkey, no sugar, no form of sugar, nothing ending with oats in terms of the ingredients, no artificial sweeteners that taste like sugar because I wanna remove that whole taste need from my mouth and from my body, and nothing made from flour. So not only nothing made from sugar, but nothing made from flour. So that means no bread, no pasta, no chips and certainly nothing from sugar, no donuts, no cake, none of that stuff. Not even a single bite, not even a single serving for three weeks. I wanted to completely cleanse my body of this need for sugar slash flour. Number two, I planned this out in advance. I didn't just say, okay, starting today, I'm not gonna eat any more sugar. That is very stupid. I have made that mistake in the past before. Instead, I pulled out my calendar and I looked at the next contiguous three week period in my schedule where I was not traveling, where there would be no holidays and be no parties or no big social events. Because if any of those things had occurred, it would have been hard to not eat some sugar because sugar is gonna be in your face when you do this kind of stuff and I didn't want any of those distractions. I wanted to make sure I was hardcore 100% for three weeks and I found it. That was actually January 2nd of this year. Number three, I planned how I would handle cheat days during that three week period. So it's not like I said, okay, for three weeks, I'm not gonna have any cheat days. Um, no, I'm a human and I only have so much willpower. So I said I can have cheat days. I just can't have sugar or bread on those cheat days. So what other foods, this is a question I asked myself, what other foods do I really like that I consider a big treat that doesn't have sugar or flour? For me, that would be things like cheese. Also things like dates. Dates are fruit. Fruit is allowed, I'll cover fruit in a second. One of my favorite meals is something we have here in Dubai, although I'm in Paraguay right now, but in Dubai they have a thing, it's a European thing, it's called burrata salad. If you don't know what that is, it is a big slice of tomato with a big circular thing of cheese. It's mozzarella on the outside and like this liquid cheese on the inside. And in Dubai, there's fancy restaurants where they like drizzle it with pesto sauce or maybe some olive oil with some vinaigrette. All stuff with no sugar, not good for you, okay? It's almost like a dessert, but there's no sugar and there's no flour. And I ate a lot of those during that three week period. So I had to manage how I could feel good about eating yummy food without eating that one thing I wasn't supposed to eat for three weeks. Number four, I had to, like a surgeon, remove all sugar and anything with sugar ingredients 
from my diet. Now, when I say sugar, you think of the basic shit like Snickers bars and donuts and Cinnabon and ice cream. That's actually not the problem. I wasn't eating a lot of that stuff just on my cheat days. Sugar is in everything. Sugar is in salsa. I eat a lot of salsa and I had to go through all my different brands of salsa, look through the ingredients, and sure enough, about half of them had sugar in it. So I had to go around and figure out the brands of salsa at the store that didn't have any sugar or any ingredient ending in the word os, like fructose, sucralose, what have you. None of that stuff. And it was sad because most salsa has sugar in it. Also, protein powder. I'm lifting a lot of weights right now. I have to consume a lot of protein. So I have a lot of protein drinks. So usually I put my protein powder in, in yogurt and mix it up. Couldn't do that anymore because guess what protein powder has in it? Sugar or sugar light sweeteners or things ending in oats. I could not eat any more protein powder. And actually I haven't had protein powder in a while. That's something I had to give up at least in this three week period. Other things, condiment, things like ketchup have sugar in it. If it had any sugar or anything like sugar, I could not eat it. It doesn't matter how microscopic the amount was. I didn't want any sugar in my system for three full weeks because I wanted to beat this addiction. I knew that if the three weeks went by and it didn't work, I wanted to know, hey man, I tried everything. I didn't want my failure to actually act to be the excuse. So I went out of my way to remove everything from my life that had even a little bit of sugar, even if it was, quote, good for me, like protein powder. Number five, I focused on fruit for anything sweet. So here's the deal. Caleb, if you're cutting sugar out of your diet, that means you can't have any fruit because fruit has sugar in it. Let me explain the difference. The sugar in fruit is not addictive. Your body was designed to eat fruit, literally. Therefore, you will never be addicted to bananas or strawberries or blueberries or raspberries, even though they taste good. So I could have, and you can have, all the fruit you want. And boy, did I eat a lot of fruit. Even to this day, I had those fruit bars that I've talked about before, these natural fruit bars where there's just four ingredients. It's like dates, blueberries, cashews, and almonds, and they cold mash them in little bars. Some countries actually have this with egg whites, so you actually have protein in the bars. Great, I ate a mountain of those. I had lots of berries, strawberries, blueberries, raspberries. I really ate piles of fruit because fruit is sweet, it tastes good, it is not addictive, and the calories are extremely low. You can have a big giant bowl of berries for 90 calories. It's awesome. If it weren't for that fruit, I would have failed because I like sweet stuff, and fruit is okay because unlike all other forms of sugar, fruit is not addictive and it doesn't harm you. Yes, fruit is carbs, so if you're a keto maniac, I understand. However, that was my only option. I wasn't focused necessarily on keto or low carb outside of having fruits. I was focused on not having sugar and beating that addiction. It's not like I was gonna try to do this for the rest of my life. I was do this for three weeks and see what happened. So, did it work? Yes, it not only worked, it worked perfectly, at least in terms of the sugar, in terms of the flour, I'll discuss that in a second. But in terms of sugar, yes. For the first time in my life, and I am 50 years old, I have been eating sugar since I was a little, 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 little tiny kid when I was three and four years old when my mom would make pancakes slathered in syrup. I have been addicted to sugar my entire life. And for the first time in my life, I no longer eat sugar, I no longer want sugar. Every time I see something at the store now that looks good, that is sugary, here is exactly what my brain does. My brain says, ooh, that looks good, I should get one. And then my brain says, no, eh, no. And that's it, and I don't buy it. I have, since the start of the year, I have had sugar a grand total of three times. The last time I had sugar was actually here in Paraguay, and it wasn't because I craved sugar, it was because it was really hot out, and it was kind of humid, and I was sweating, and I wanted something cold, so I got a little bit of ice cream. That's it. As I record this video, this is March. I've had no sugar other than three little times where I didn't even need it in the last three months. Amazing. I no longer eat sugar, when I have cheat days, I don't eat sugar. My wife still eats sugar all the time. I don't, matter of fact, every night, my wife and I will watch a TV show, because that's what she likes to do, and she'll have little pieces of chocolate. And before, I'm like, oh, I want some chocolate too. Now I don't even want it. I literally don't want sugar anymore. I'm here in Paraguay. One of my favorite desserts in the world are what they call alfajors. They are an Argentinian food. It's a little dessert, it's a little cake, these circular cakes where they have layers of leche and other things like that in there, and dulce de leche and chocolate, and they're covered in chocolate. They're amazing. I haven't needed to eat any here. I don't want them anymore. It's great. So for me, going cold turkey for three weeks, not even a bite, 
worked. I now don't need sugar. I wish someone had told me this 15 years ago. It is interesting, of all the advice I've gotten throughout everyone on the internet, not one person said, hey Caleb, just don't eat any sugar at all for three weeks, not even a bite. I had to figure this out on my own, fascinating. So that's the good news, what's the bad news? Well, there is some slight bad news. For some reason that I don't understand, not only did I not eat sugar, I didn't eat flour, and my need for sugar went away, but my cravings for flour, for bread, pasta, chips, pizza, is still there. It did go down about 20%, but I still, when I see pizza, I go, oh my God, that's so good, I want that. And I do want it, and I have cheated several times with bread. So as an example here in Paraguay, Paraguay has really good empanadas. If you don't know what those are, it's bread, and inside the bread is cheese with various things like ham or onion or things like that. They're amazing, and Paraguay has amazing empanadas, and I've been a bad boy eating a few of those. There's no sugar in that stuff, it's bread and cheese and meat but it's good and I still crave it. So for some reason, again, that I don't understand, going cold turkey for three weeks without having any flour, any bread, or anything bread-like didn't do it. It did it for sugar, it didn't do it for bread. So that means to me one of two things. Either I'm weird, I have a weird body and it should have worked, and my hormonal structure, my body's just weird, and I need longer. Or three weeks isn't long enough for human beings to break the addiction of flour. Possible. So here's my next plan. I don't know when I'm gonna do this yet, because right now I'm traveling, this is not a good time to do this, as I said earlier. But once I get settled back in Dubai, I'm actually gonna do six weeks cold turkey of nothing from flour. No bread, no chips, no pasta, no nothing. And at the end of six weeks, I'll see if that worked. Hopefully it will, because that'll be painful. <laughs> but I'm gonna give that a shot, because that's the last component in terms of my diet that is a problem. Sugar was a big part of it, probably the biggest part of it. The next part is flour, bread, sandwiches. I love pizza, pizza's awesome, and I still crave it. I gotta get rid of those cravings, and then I'm good to go. Now, does this mean that suddenly I will get to 9% body fat when I have the craving of bread removed? No, you can still go over your calories without eating bread or sugar. I like cheese, I like nuts. You can still go over calories with those kinds of things but it's made a lot easier to get the body fat down and to maintain that, especially as I get into my 50s. And as always, I will keep you updated as to whether or not that works. I'll keep you posted along the way. But in terms of beating sugar, that's the recipe. Don't eat any sugar for three weeks and you should have the same result as me. You'll never want it ever again. Part of that is improving your environment and not having your food in your house in the first place. And if you wanna improve your environment to improve your productivity, you should watch that video and I'll see you in that video.